Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 2 through 4. Someone once described character as who you are when no one is looking. The Greek word for character means minting a coin. An image is impressed on the coin, an image that anyone can recognize. Character flows out of your heart motive. It's not your behavior, your outward actions, but your motive for doing them that defines good character. Why you do what you do reveals your character. Paul lists the character qualities an elder, a Zakin, must have before he pastors a faith community. Do you think a person is born with these qualities? Research on infants has confirmed that's definitely not the case. In fact, a child's sin nature is often more obvious than any character qualities. Then how are character qualities formed in a child? And how does a man acquire these in order to be as a Ken, a wise biblical elder? No matter what the age, character development comes through teaching, role modeling, and correction by those in authority. Remember, a person with authority is responsible to commend or correct those he serves. Let's review the nature of character. A child isn't born with character. Through genetic influence, an infant indeed has a distinct personality, but not character. We've previously mentioned a consequence of Adam and Eve's disobedience. Every child born is under the control of his or her sin nature. If left to himself, he would do evil. Yet our Creator has also formed each person with the spiritual ability to examine his inner self. It's called a conscience. Through the godly exercise of appropriate authority, each individual can be guided to turn away from his sinful innate response to gratify his flesh. The Bible leaves no doubt about the basic nature of children, so it's up to parents to walk in the authority God has given them to imprint onto their child godly character. Consider these passages as they emanate from a God who knows the sinful nature of mankind. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far from him. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. The rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to the one who bore him. Do you need to hear any more? Each child's personality, and thus his response to correction, is different. It's the responsibility of the parents to discover which manner of discipline best suits their son or daughter. As an expression of love for God, molding the character of their children is not optional. It calls for persistence and loving dedication. How determined our Lord wants you to be in developing Christ-like character in your children is captured by His commands to those who trust and obey Him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5 through 9. Can you sense God's intensity in His command to parents to diligently train their children in their home? This isn't a hit and miss situation as you run out the door each morning or dash off to activities or meetings. It's a devoted response to our Lord's heart that your children increasingly encounter Him 
through you each and every day. How do you go about instilling godly character in your children? First, the value you place on loving God and walking in His ways will be picked up by your children if they see you living it. Your children observe you as a prime role model of the character you want to see developed in them. So hypocrisy will get you nowhere. Jesus warned about a lifestyle that doesn't match your teaching. He used religious leaders as an example of how not to live. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. When you get up each morning, do you make our Lord first in your day? How? Do you pray? Do you pray together with those in your household? Do you get into the Bible for guidance and application? Do you get into the Bible for guidance and application together with your family? At other times during the day, how do you fulfill your parental mandate from Deuteronomy chapter 6? Do you sit together during meals without the blare of television or slavishly answering the phone? Do you use times without distraction to get to know how your family is doing? Do you use these times together to share biblical insights to help them see how the Bible applies to their lives? How do you end your day? Are you on your knees in grateful thanksgiving to God? Are you on your knees together as a family in grateful thanksgiving to God? The questions we just asked are vital. They reveal if and how you use your home time to help you and your family grow in Christ-like character. You may want to review the ones to which you answered no. If you have a wife and family, You've been given a special privilege and responsibility. You're able to prioritize for your children our Lord's perspective on how to use your home. You're also given a brief window of time in which to instill in them godly character. When you walk or drive together, you have a teachable moment that can be turned into a character development occasion. And to reinforce your opportunity, at day's end, once again, make it a family custom to debrief. Make sure each one of you in the family has a clean slate with God before going to bed. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. Make this admonition a nightly tradition to keep the evil one from lodging a foothold that can lead to disharmony in your home. As we've mentioned in previous lessons, the world's values and goals of humanist controlled public education are not only opposed to God's goals and values, they're determined to instill worldliness and humanism into your child's heart. Only within your home will your children find the purposeful role modeling of what it means to love their Lord in obedient trust, to truly be followers of Jesus. If you're exercising godly authority, then you know better than anyone how the sin nature of your family members will spark to life. It's up to you to help your children overcome evil tendencies with God's ways, and that purpose must be intentional on your part. Let's review this reality one more time. Please remember it. Character is learned, and it begins to be impressed on you from your earliest years. As you instill biblical character in your children or grandchildren through teaching, role modeling, and correction, that child's propensity to give in to his sin nature diminishes. As a child grows, godly character will continue to be imprinted on his way of life if his parents are diligent and faithful to keep themselves deepening in Christ-likeness. Ever-increasing godly character counters the inclinations of their sin nature and develops a sense of personal responsibility and accountability. For instance, Good manners are motivated by respect for others as being worthy of your consideration. 
Healthy relationships are nurtured because godly companions spur each other on in good deeds and self-sacrifice. Responsible work attitudes begin in the home as burdens are shared to mutually benefit one another. Proper deference towards those to whom it's due prepares the heart for both godly submission as well as godly exercise of authority. None of these character purposes comes automatically. They're either a lifestyle pattern to be imprinted or just wishful words in the wind. What adjustments will it take for you as a parent to give these character purposes the same significance our Lord does? The first authority you encounter in life are your parents. They're our Father's initial primary means to sanctify or set apart for His purposes each of His children. A significant amount of Christ-likeness is acquired through your willing response to the authorities He sets over you. A sinful response leads to rebellion, independence, and control. Many young parents today have been handicapped in their child raising. They were outsourced themselves as children by parents who were too preoccupied with their own motivations to fulfill God's parameters for child raising. For followers of Jesus, the Bible presents clear guidelines of the type of Christ-like character He wants to impress on our personalities through His Spirit. Sadly, so few parents are aware of these character qualities, and they certainly haven't practiced them. We encourage you to see chapters 7 and 8 of our book, Pastoring by Elders, for more on character development. On your screen is a chart of character qualities that come with your sin nature and qualities that are produced through godly authorities. Take a moment and see how your character development has progressed. Don't think that character development in your children can be put off. That which is instilled early can keep maturing and expanding. Certainly the character of the teenage Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been impressed early and deeply by God-honoring parents. Our God doesn't waste the influence of those who love and fear Him and who walk uprightly to represent His character. Even in the darkest of societies, those who've both acquired and practiced His character can be raised up to strongly impact unbelievers. Whether you're a parent or not, whether you were raised in a godly home or not, this is our Father's desire for you. To represent His Son Jesus to all who meet you, your character development is key for others to see Him in you. And His instruments to bring about this include the authorities He sets in your life. Here are a few questions about character development for you to discuss. In your own home, how high a priority is character development, not only for your children, but also for you as a parent? How has your character changed in the years you have followed Jesus? Describe some of the changes that repentance and sanctification have produced and ask others for feedback. 